The biggest thing for me and that I noticed with our audience and people that call in is uh, is just pornography. Just the These NoFap guys literally believe that like women are walking down the street and then they get this da -da 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 -da. He hasn't been fat. The effect of free and widely available pornography is having on young people, especially men in our society at this time. Well, I think it it's like Treasure Island in, in Pinocchio. I mean, and I was watching you on Dr. Phil and you were discussing um, your, yeah. your addiction. Yeah, pornography. Yeah. You violate your conscience, man. You will pay. There is a dilemma happening right now in the world. I see you don't have a lifeguard here at your beach. I'm not at the beach, this is a bathtub. No body of water is safe without a lifeguard. It's two feet deep, lady. You're, what are you doing here? Do you think there is some sort of post-traumatic stress that is in you from this experience. Yes, and uh, I think it kicks in mostly when I go out in public. Now, let me first clarify. There are many benefits to taking advice from others. These include gaining valuable insights based off the experience of others, a new sense of optimism, and above all else, a like-minded community for individuals going through something similar. But in return for the value provided, these individuals skyrocket into fortune usually without the need for any quality skills. The problem arises then when people needlessly follow advice without first determining whether this person is in a position to give valuable advice in the first place. Today, advice is given on anything and everything. Interpret stuff um, as they must. Some you are, a doctor of. What some are, you are saying that of? you're bipolar. <laughs> wow, what does that mean? I guess that you know, you're on two ends of the spectrum. Wow, and then what? What's the cure? Medicine? Make me like them? Not gonna happen. I'm by winning. With statements and opinions that are thoroughly contradictory. 90% of the time, these opinions are not backed by sufficient science. Towards needing pornography. And the reason that you need it is to escape a pain that you have inside that you might be aware of or not aware of. And the porn acts as a pain reliever, like an opiate. And all this ultimately leads to disarray. Do we listen to him or her? This doctor or that doctor? This trend or that one? It has to be said, taking advice from anyone without first stopping to think can be incredibly dangerous. Okay, but what does this have to do with NoFap? You see, advice applies to all things, even retention. And with so much faltering, unscientific evidence to correctly display the truth, I think it's time we dive into the details and find out if retention actually works, if there are actually any benefits. In this two-part documentary series, I want to dive into the world of NoFap, thoroughly dissecting the negative and positive aspects of retention and whether or not it actually works. But first, we'll dissect porn, its effects on the brain and your life as a whole. What if I told you that there's something normalized in our society, something so common that everyone has done it thousands of times? And and it's a, and it's it's a non-trivial technological problem. You know, it's now possible for young men to look at more beautiful nude women in one day than any man has ever seen. You know, prior to 10 years ago, 20 years ago, than any man in history had ever seen. But engaging in this activity will damage your mental health, your sexual health harm your relationships, affect your ability to act, and is linked to human trafficking. You'd probably think twice about engaging in that activity, wouldn't you? When discussing porn in this light, it doesn't seem like a fun pastime anymore, does it? I'm Little Red, and I'm riding through the forest. I'm not even really a wolf. What? <laughs> yeah, I'm Skeletor! <laughs> But before we get into the published research papers discussing the effects pornography has on your brain and your activity, we must first dive into the history of how it all came about. Mmm, it's just a carrot though. Do you have anything bigger and harder you can show me? Hmm. How's this? Watch how easily knife dices this cucumber. I don't know. I really wish there was something bigger and harder you can show me. Well, 
I do have this titanium rod. I have something else in mind. What is the meaning of this? Pornography is the portrayal of explicit content with the exclusive purpose of creating sexual arousal in the viewer. Pornography can be presented in a variety of different mediums from books and stories to videos with paid actors. And while depictions of sexuality have existed since prehistoric times, as shown in the Attic Red figure Kylix from C510 BC, they have never been more prevalent than they are today. After the modern invention of photography in 1826, photographic pornography quickly followed. Parisian demi monde would display their photos at large gatherings so to gain attention. The first law criminalizing pornography came about from the Publications Act in 1857, urging society for the suppression of acts that are considered a vice. This act was passed in Britain and Ireland where the sale of pornography, a statutory offense, giving the court power to seize and destroy offending material. The American equivalent came from the Comstock Act and was passed in 1873, which made pornography sent through the mail illegal. Kirchner directed the first pornographic film ever made, titled Les Coucheurs de la Marie, which showed a woman named Louise Willie performing a striptease. This film inspired a generation of risque French films depicting women stripping. However, around 1920, sexually explicit films opened producers, both amateurs and professionals, to prosecution. In 1969, Denmark became the first country to abolish censorship, legalizing pornography in the process, which led to a huge burst of investments to commercially produce pornography. I was addicted to porn from the age of 11 to 24. Wow. That was the first time I got on it. The first erotic film was released in the United States, titled Blue Movie. The film was the first golden age of porn and had major influence in what followed. Of course, what really blew pornography to the worldwide scale it is consumed at today was the creation of the World Wide Web in the 1990s. Data from 2015 suggests the use of pornography has been steadily going up every single year. The problem? It mainly affects teenagers and young adults. In a study done by the Journal of Health, 84.4% of 14 to 18 year old men use pornography regularly and 57% of 14 to 18 year old females have done the same. Since the 2010s, the usage of porn production websites has exploded, with both Pornhub and X videos having 3.3 and 3.4 billion users per year, respectively. Today, it is a global epidemic and can be considered a new age drug, one that has and will continue to have drastic consequences on the livelihood of the world's youth. Within society, there exists a stigma, one insisting the liberating effects of porn for women one stating, porn is healthy and natural for all. The thing is, the more our society becomes sexually saturated, the more porn producers pump out harder and harder material to satisfy the masses. I mean, it's evident in how accessible pornography has become. You can watch anything, anywhere, anytime. I really need this job though, and I seriously, I'll do anything to keep it. So can you just tell me what I have to do, please? I really want this job. Well. Okay, we get that. But what does the evidence actually say about how porn may or may not be affecting people? Unfortunately, the nature of pornography itself makes the answer blurry. You see, the evidence gathered on the effects of porn are either based on self-reports or on natural laboratory settings. However, through a growing body of evidence established by literature, as well as my own experimentation, hints have begun to emerge. According to a paper published by JAMA Psychiatry in 2014, watching porn shrinks the part of the brain associated with pleasure. Researchers at the Max Planck Institute, based out of Berlin, looked at the brains of 60 men while they shuffled through pornographic images. They followed up by quizzing these men on their porn habits. It was found that the striatum, a part of the brain that makes up the reward system, was smaller in those who watched a lot of porn, meaning they would require more stimulus to become aroused. The super stimuli is grounded in our evolutionary biology. It has been found numerous times that organisms of all types respond to enhanced levels of stimuli, dopamine or other neurotransmitters that are above those levels naturally produced. 
This has been observed in nature repeatedly. Robins are known to favor colorful eggs over others, even if those eggs don't belong to them. In humans, intaking high amounts of sugar and fat cause a super stimulus in the nervous system. Large producers like McDonald's take advantage of this. Unfortunately, porn is probably the biggest super stimulus inducer of them all. Pornographic actresses have augmented their features to play on this very primitive part of your brain. The same mechanism that causes birds to pursue shiny, colorful objects is the same mechanism overwhelming our minds with the addictive effects of porn. When in its natural state, these mechanisms fuel our emotional well-being, our subconscious decision-making, and the pursuit of our goals. Even when impacted in the slightest way, it can make these tasks 10 times more difficult. These evolved pathways are the reason why humans have been so successful. They cause us to pursue what is rare or valuable and avoid what is dangerous. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter most associated with the motivation of getting things done. This is also, coincidentally, the pathway that porn so readily takes advantage of. Dopamine is released in the anticipation of a beneficial reward, not in the obtainment of that beneficial reward. This means dopamine is directly the cause for all the actions that we take to better our lives, our health, or to achieve our goals. ED, erectile dysfunction in young men, is usually attributed to desensitization caused by watching too much pornography. <laughs> like, so what, what made you want to do it? And then what were your results from it? I was tired of having ED. Yeah. Real talk. You would have fine chick. And you can't even get up because you're watching porn. Interestingly enough, men who watch more porn were more easily aroused when watching porn in the lab. However, the problem does not arise when watching porn. It arises when actually engaging in sexual intercourse. The desensitization coupled with an unrealistic expectation of what your partner's body should look like affects the ability of men to get it up. On top of that, research by Anna Bridges and Patricia Morokoff found that the more men watch sexual media, the more they were not satisfied with their sex lives. This desensitization is a result of your body adapting to the constant excess of dopamine that is present in your synaptic clefts. As a result, less and less dopamine receptors are made available for dopamine reuptake. This ultimately results in more and more dopamine being needed in order for you to feel the same type of motivation or anticipation for a goal as you did before. Going out and pursuing worthwhile goals pale in comparison to the dopamine rush achieved by fapping. In a study conducted at the University of Cambridge, researchers studied the brains of straight male participants under fMRIs. It was found that those who masturbated regularly had the same regions of the brain activated as those of drug addicts. If someone has been masturbating every day for multiple years, they may not necessarily realize the influence this action has over their lives. The way drug addiction is measured is not by the amount of adverse effects experienced, although there are plenty. Drug addiction is measured by how doing that substance affects the rest of your life, your job, relationships and friendships, your ability to make money and provide. When it affects your ability to properly get aroused, make friends, get out of your comfort zone and date, you have a problem. When pornography takes up large chunks of time that could be better spent doing something else, you are addicted. People who spend too much time on porn have problems with regular sex. They start by watching tame videos and eventually watch more and more extreme stuff, as the dopamine required to get the same fix is just not enough due to the lack of receptors. When you're with a real human being, it just doesn't do it anymore. There have been some people who would rather watch porn than go on actual dates, and that's just ridiculous. ...enough to enter into relationships and start trying to engage in sexual activity, I realized that I essentially conditioned my brain to prefer pixels over, right. you know, people and to your reptilian brain every single time you masturbate to pornography your mind thinks you just reproduced with a beautiful girl lastly i think the most important point is this porn before the internet still required some form of creativity some form of imagining yourself as the person mating the pornography videos on the web are not like this at all you are literally watching another guy fuck a girl think about that you are literally watching another male animal your competition bang the girl you wanted to mate with, and then you're pledging yourself to it. Like, damn, only animals at the very, very, very bottom of the hierarchy would engage in this type of behavior. <laughs> Survival and reproduction is the ultimate goal for any organism. How competent or productive do you think you'll be if every day your mind thinks you already accomplished the ultimate goal?
Personally, I don't actually believe there are any benefits to watching porn, other than the short-term rush of endorphins you experience. But there is an argument to be made that porn helps you find out what you like, albeit it would be better to just experiment with someone else and find that out for yourself. Watching porn has been linked to a multitude of problems for individuals and wider society, but for every study maligning it, another clears its name. Often, evidence is mixed and the research methods and sample sizes of studies have their limitations. Will the future of ever more immersive porn bring more risks? It's too early to say. The question of cause and effect comes up a lot with research into porn. Does porn attract more people with sexually aggressive tendencies, those who are in unhappy relationships, those with smaller reward systems in their brain, and those with sexual addiction, or does it cause these feelings? It's a tricky area to research, but until the answers are more definitive, the evidence so far suggests that the likelihood that porn has a negative effect very much depends on the individual consuming it.